Dear ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to say to I'd like to say good morning to everybody. And first of all, I'd like to express our deep condolences with the last blasts in Manchester, in London, today's, in Philippines, in Indonesia, and some other countries. All these dramatic developments we are being a witness. Dear Chairman and Dr. John Chipman, I'd like to say that I'm very happy to be here at IISS Shangri-La Dialogue. I'm the first time here. And allow me to express gratitude to the organizers of the forum, forum the International Institute for Strategic Studies, for the invitation and the opportunity to share my views on the global and regional security problems. We are also very grateful to the Singapore side for the hospitality and kindness which they showed toward, toward the Russian military delegation. Dear colleagues, the situation in the world is become, becoming more and more complicated and hard to predict. The lack of trust and the impossibility to reach compromise are starting to make a greater impact. The stability and sustainable development is being put into jeopardy by regional conflicts, spreading of mass destruction weapons, terrorism, extremism, and transporter, transborder crime. In the given conditions, the policy of gaining unilateral benefits normally pursued at the expense of other countries is becoming even more, even more unacceptable. The attempts to intervene in the other countries' affairs in violation of the norms and provisions of the international law impose their own formula of domestic transformations disregarding traditions and national identities leading to deterioration of situation and escalation of tensions in the world. All the, all the above creates and fuels a wide range of challenges for international security, among which terrorism occupies a special place. The last year's developments in the Middle East and Northern Africa are, strike, are a striking example where terrorist groups, ISIS primarily, managed to gain unprecedented strength through the vacuum of power and lawlessness. Terror turned into a global threat. No country today can feel immune to terrorism. We are confident that nowadays the fight against this evil has to be one of the highest priorities in the international affairs. Russian assessments of the situation as well as the comprehensive program of actions to combat international terrorism was introduced by the President of the Russian Federation, Vladimir Putin, at the United Nations General Assembly in September 2015. The purpose of these initiatives is to create a broad international coalition, which could unite different powers on the principles of common values and the international law guided by the provisions of the United Nations Charter. We are ready to cooperate in this dimension with all the nations concerned without exceptions. Today, Syria remains the front line in the fight against international terrorism, where Russian armed forces continue to provide cooperation and support to the Syrian government in, the, in the, their struggle against ISIS and Jubhat al-Nusra. 
after the successful liberation of Aleppo, the capability of terrorists was considerably shattered. Today, our priority is to ensure the cessation of hostilities and to provide conditions for political interaction between the belligerents. Thanks to the effort of the Russian Reconciliation Center, the heads of over of thousand and a half populated areas and settlements across the country refused to continue the fight against the government forces. We focus on dealing with humanitarian problems in Syria. Every day, we deliver and distribute humanitarian supplies among the local population. We did a tremendous job to demand the area. We cleared approximately 1,000 1, hectares from mines and improvised explosive devices in eastern Aleppo and over 1,000 and a half hectares inside the city and the historical part of Palmyra. We provided medical assistance for the civilian population and we attended to over 22,000 Syrians supplying them with medication. We also deployed a mobile field hospital in Aleppo. Coordinated actions of Russia, Iran, and Turkey, with, which acted as guarantors of ceasefire, provided for establishment of a direct dialogue between the armed opposition and Syrian government and the framework of Astana Forum, capital of Kazakhstan. On the 4th of May in Astana, together with guarantor partners, we signed a memorandum on creating of so-called zones of de-escalation in Syria. The implementation of this document, we hope so, will facilitate this cessation of hostilities and unhindered humanitarian access to the de-escalation zone. This will, will also create conditions for a secure, voluntary return of the refugees and internally displaced persons. International terrorism still remains one of the most dangerous security threats in the Asia-Pacific region. Over the last year, we have started to witness increased activity of the groups using terrorist methods of combat in China and the countries of Southeast Asia. With the extensive support of international terrorist groups like the Islamic Movement of East Turkestan, China, Jamaa al Islamiya, Indonesia, and Abu Sayyaf, Philippines, they regularly organize blasts in public places, attacks on governmental forces, associations, and abductions of civilians, including foreigners. In 2016, terrorist acts claimed hundreds in the Asia-Pacific region. The expansion of ISIS activity in the region, as well as increasing promotion of ideas of radical Islam, has a negative impact on the situation in the Asia-Pacific. The extremist leaders consider local population of the Southeast Asia as a promising base to replenish their numbers. According to available information, around 100 mercenaries from Asian countries fight on the ISIS side in the Middle East. Recent events in Europe showed us what these militants are capable to do they, once they return home. Despite the serious counter-terrorist activity led on the national level, it's quite evident that these measures will not be sufficient. We support the expansion and consolidation of international engagements in the framework of various organizations, including Shanghai Cooperation Organization, ADMM Plus, and 
ASEAN Regional Forum Regional Counterterrorist Centers. Dear colleagues, the tension in the Korean Peninsula is very alarming. It's important to prevent the development of crisis and transfer this process into negotiation channel, which would be in favor of security interests of all countries of the region. Like the other countries, we have serious concern about the actions of Pyongyang, which do not contribute to the, to the reduction of the tensions in the region. At the same time, we believe the activity conducted in this region under the auspices of the U.S. aimed at deployment of the elements of global missile defense not only impede the resolution of the existing problems on the peninsula, but on the contrary, aggravate them. The process of third deployment, I mean ballistic missile defense in the Republic of Korea, has already started. Equally disturbing are the ideas to build up the missile defense capability recently voiced in Tokyo. Such course of events may have serious and negative effects on the international and regional stability. In the Asia-Pacific region, where the situation in the security field has become very complicated, a new destructive factor is emerging. This factor may hamper the resolution of nuclear and other problems in Korean Peninsula inside an arms race, including missile arms race. Further steps which move the missile defense assessed closer to the borders of the Russian Federation will surely be taken into account by our, by, by our side during the analysis of the situation and our possible response. Some colleagues tell us that the strategy of exclusive closed military alliances existing in the Asia-Pacific region is the cornerstone of the regional security. We are very confident that the model of minor coalitions cannot be a universal means because it doesn't guarantee security of member of states and taking into, into consideration the nature of threats, which has changed since the times of the Cold War, a reasonable question arises. The question of capability of these organizations to effectively respond to modern regional and global challenges. We believe that together we should improve the security architecture in Asia-Pacific Asia region bringing into line with modern realities and address concerns of all countries of the region. We are convinced that such architecture should be built upon the principles of indivisible security, respect for the international law, peaceful resolution of disputes and conflicts, non-interference in the internal affairs of other states, this approach is shared by many of our colleagues within the Asia-Pacific, first of all among the ASEAN nations. We consider the association as an important strategic partner, partner in the regional security and stability issues, which specified in the final document of the ASEAN-Russian summit in Sochi past year. This was also confirmed by the informal meeting by the Asian and Russian ministers of defense, which took place the same last year. Russia introduced a range of initiatives aimed at strengthening of broad collective principles in the region and generation of uniform code of conduct in the Asia Pacific. We count on the support and real contribution to this work from all the interest sites, states. A special role in regional security consolidation belongs to the ADMM plus mechanism. We are satisfied 
with its effectiveness and practical output. Last year's successful joint military exercises, which concluded the three-year cycle of the forum, also proved effectiveness and relevance of ADMM+. We intend to make a significant contribution to the general capacity building in the field of humanitarian, dem humanitarian demining. We'd like to thank our ADMM Plus partners for the support of our plans and initiatives. We feel that our colleagues are interested in the joint work and the sphere of demining, taking in account the experience of demining that we gained in Syria. We see prospects of collaboration with the ASEAN Regional Demining Center in Cambodia. We place special emphasis upon development of naval cooperation with the countries of the region, both in multilateral and bi bilateral formats. Friendly port calls of our ships have become a good tradition in many Asia-Pacific countries. This year, Russian seamen have already visited the Republic of Korea, the Philippines, Vietnam, Thailand, and Indonesia, took part in a naval parade in Singapore, and we are planning to conduct a few more calls at the ports, including Thailand, to participate in the events celebrating the 50th Asian anniversary. Dear ladies and gentlemen, we are interested in Asia-Pacific becoming a balanced, safe, and prosperous region, safeguarding peace and stability, promoting economic growth, developing partnership in our common duty and responsibility. We are confident that we have all the necessary means to fulfill this mission. And we are ready for the open discussion and then initiatives that would promote of our common security. Thank you for your time and for your attention.